Hey guys, my name is Rhiannon, and that was really cheesy. <laughs> I gotta be honest with you guys, I feel a little bit like a YouTube imposter right now because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> But we're gonna figure it out and I'm gonna tell you the story anyway. Hi there, if you are new here, my name is Rhiannon and I am 24 years old. I live in Maine. I am a ballerina here in Maine. Yes, somehow made it happen. <laughs> and I own my own small business. I actually own a dance studio and I love talking about fitness, health, life here in Maine, all kinds of stuff. If you follow me on Instagram, then you already knew that this post was coming because I put up a poll. I asked you guys if I should do next a kitchen reno tour. We have done a lot of work for our kitchen since we first moved into this house two years ago and I'm really happy with how it turned out. I think it's really beautiful and I'd love to share that with you guys. The other option was to tell you guys the story of how I came to own a dance studio at age 22 and that sounds really glamorous but I'm not sure that the story is as glamorous. It was a long hard journey and I'm super grateful that it happened and I love what I do and I'm I'm excited to share this with you guys. So if you don't already know about my vlog, then I will insert a link here for you to check out this in a written format if you'd rather read about this. I know sometimes I'd rather read, sometimes I'd rather watch YouTube. So you have the option. If you don't follow me on Instagram, I would love to see you guys on there. I will put my handle somewhere on the screen and it's been really fun interacting with you guys. So please go check me out there. All right, let's just dive into it. Um, to start this story, it's super cliche, but I have to go all the way back to the beginning of my dance career and tell you a little bit about that. And that is basically just that I have been training and dance since I was a little kid. I started with a dance studio in Central Maine. My parents were bringing me up there so that I could see my grandmother more often. And I discovered that I really loved ballet. From there, we moved and I went to a dance studio in Southern Maine and just once again, rediscovered that I really loved ballet and wanted to keep with it. I believe that the ballet instructor there was pregnant at the time or something like that. So something was happening with the ballet program for some reason and I was looking for another school and the um, the teacher recommended where I ended up being long term and that is Maine State Ballet. It is the biggest dance studio in the state and uh, very obviously ballet centered. So it was perfect and it's Balanchine training for those of you that speak ballet. Eventually, it was recommended to me that I go see Main State Ballet as the Nutcracker, fell in love with it, and was dancing there uh, by age eight. It's a fantastic organization. You should go check them out. <laughs> I was dancing there. I was receiving amazing training, and like many young dancers, I decided that I wanted to try pursuing a career in ballet to see if I could hack it as a professional. And so I started auditioning. I went to different summer intensives, and I even got accepted to Boston Ballet's pre-professional program, which is a feeder program into their second company, BB2, which then feeds into Boston Ballet Company, if you're lucky. There are a lot of reasons as to why I decided to pursue a career here in Maine, and I'm lucky enough to have been able to pursue a career here in Maine. Um, and those are all stories for another day, and I would be happy to tell you them, so if you would like to hear a little bit about why and how I pursued a career in ballet here in Maine, comment down below. The short of it is I love my life here in Maine. I didn't want to leave my family, and I was really happy here. I wasn't prepared to give all of that up to pursue a career elsewhere. So with that, I was still living here in Maine with my family and was dancing and going to college and um, actually went back when I was 14, I started assisting at a dance studio down the street from my house. I was helping out with some classes for littles and discovered that I really enjoy teaching. I love it. I love the idea of sharing my experiences and my passion and my knowledge of dance with the next generation. That was very exciting to me. So by the time I turned 16, I was actually teaching some of my own classes there at that dance studio and the following year was teaching classes at Maine State Ballet. Um, so that was really exciting and that area of my life was kind of um, going right along with my ballet career. It was, it was awesome. And then here is where the story kind of gets interesting. <laughs> I got promoted to the rank of principal within the Maine State Ballet Company at age, I think, 19. I had several prima ballerina roles in my repertoire at that point. I was living at home. I was going to college locally. I met the man of my dreams and we got engaged. By then it was the spring of 2016 and I was literally one day away from graduating with my bachelor's degree in writing and publishing and a minor in business. I had an internship set up for that summer with a large corporation and my plan from there was pretty much to get my degree, 
do my internship and then find a job in corporate America with flexible enough hours that I could continue my dancing and training in the evening, which is one of the really cool things about the Main State Ballet Company is, you know, a lot of ballet companies do their work during the day. They come in and take class in the morning. We do everything at night to accommodate schedules because everybody has to have uh, their jobs and that sort of thing. So it was doable. Life was good and going right on track. <laughs> One day, I was headed to Marshalls with my mother to get a pair of heels to wear with my graduation cap and gown, and then my phone rang. It was my boss from the local dance studio that I had been teaching at and assisting with for a long time at that point, and let's just say that she was very audibly upset. To this day, honestly, I'm not really sure what made her call me in that moment. Um, you know, I, I don't really even know what happened that day to make her so upset, but I could tell that she needed to unload some stuff. Basically, she told me that she, yeah, that she, that she wanted to sell the business to me. <laughs> she didn't feel that it was right for the business or for her life anymore, and that I had a great support system, and I was young and, and passionate about dance, and she just thought that I was the right person for the job, and it was just kind of out of the blue. <laughs> We had kind of playfully in the past talked about the possibility of me one day taking over the business and um, you know there's a lot of like someday or maybes or eventually and it was never really something that we were serious about. I had even helped her with some like dance studio owner tasks, scheduling and payroll and stuff like that. I don't know. I, I, I had just taken on some responsibilities for sure. Just in case it ever did happen, it was all stuff that I was interested in and I genuinely enjoyed doing and helping her out with. Um, but it still was a surprise and I was elated. I can't even tell you. I hung up the phone and I was just so happy. I was like jittery with excitement and all I could think about was what I could do and how I could, you know, enhance the program and help the kids and it totally just consumed me and became all that I thought about, all that I wanted to do. It became my dream. I wanted to own a dance studio now. Like this was put on the table in front of me and I was ready to go for it. That summer it was even really difficult to stay focused at work. I had that internship and I I was totally daydreaming about the studio and what I wanted to do and um, just all kinds of stuff. So yeah, it was, it was hard to stay focused for that duration of time. So eventually the internship came to an end and that was at the end of July and I was like ready to go. I was ready to take the position of studio director or studio owner by September. At that point, the owner and I had talked, we were negotiating. My dad, who, cause I, you know, I was still um, 20. I was still 20 at the time. So my dad was helping me out. He's been a part of business acquisitions before. So he would meet with me and her. We checked out the space together. We really were making steps forward and I was feeling really good. I was feeling really excited. So of course, <laughs> that's when it all kind of started to fall apart. The owner was totally showing signs of hesitancy and um, uncertainty and it became clear that she was really second guessing her decision and, and was, I don't know if she was trying to back out but at least was thinking about it. And honestly, looking back, I, I don't blame her. Like she spent so much time building up that business and um, making it what it was. So I, I understand that. But on the other side of things, I also couldn't put my life on pause. I was just ready to get started and, and, and build something, build my life up when this happened. And I wasn't ready to just put everything on pause until she was ready. And it was like kind of a waiting game at that point. And that didn't seem fair either. So the next decision that I made, I knew would either take away any chance of me ever owning that small business, which you have to understand at that point was totally my dream or it was gonna be the perfect thing to do. And I quit. <laughs> yep, I, I quit the studio, but it was only because I had another job offer come in that I, I couldn't really turn down. That job offer came in from Main State Ballet where I was working, where I still work. They wanted me to start teaching four days a week, which essentially meant that I would have to leave my other job to make time for that. And in addition to that, they would also start paying me to dance. And that was also a dream come true. To be living in Maine, to have grown up at that studio and that company, and to have been training for so long, 
and to actually be a professional dancer was a total dream come true. Yeah! So while that was happening, my dreams of owning a dance studio were also seemingly just crumbling. Oh. So it was, it was kind of a bittersweet period of time. <laughs> Being totally honest from there, this is the part that was not at all glamorous. A lot of emails, a lot of meetings. You know, I was still working for the studio owner just a little bit, like I was setting some competition routines and that sort of thing. So we were still in touch and I was working a lot with at the other studio. I had other marketing type jobs and freelance gigs. And so I was still staying plenty busy and just kind of building my life in other ways because I wasn't sure if this was going to pan out. I talked to my family a lot. I talked to my fiance a lot and it was hard. It was really sticky. I wanted this to happen so, so bad and I just wasn't sure that it was. Eventually I got to the point with, with the studio owner that I had to say, um, we're either going to sign a contract and set a date or you know enough is enough and, and it's just not gonna happen and I'll, I'll understand either way but I just getting strung along like that I was getting tired and, and frustrated she understood and so two years later after all of us began that's exactly what we did we signed a contract and I officially own the studio I have to say that while I like to think that I worked really hard to make this happen and after we were able to move forward I did and I, I still do um, this kind of fell in my lap. Like I, I feel so fortunate that the studio owner saw something in me to think that, that I was the right person to take over her baby. And then it totally just became a dream of mine that I didn't even know I had. So in that regard, I'm, I'm very, very lucky. But at the same time, you know, I want to, I want to tell any aspiring studio owners out there or, or dancers or whatever, that if you want something, you can make it happen. I don't think if I had played my cards the way that I did, this would have happened. I think it would have fallen through and I would have had to find a new dream. But I was so determined at that point that there was, there wasn't any way that I was not going to let this happen. I was at that point going to have a studio one way or the other, whether I bought this one or I opened my own because at that point it totally became my dream. I knew I was going to stay in Maine. I knew I loved dancing. I knew I loved sharing that with with my students and so I was going to find a way to make that happen. I'm super, super grateful to that studio owner for recognizing something in me and for, for realizing that I did have a really great support system to do this business because let me tell you, it takes a village. <laughs> it's hard, it's hard work. I'm so grateful to my family for supporting me every step of the way. You know, it, it does, like you, you need that support to, to do this. It was a really long, a really rough journey, but I am so thankful that it happened the way that it did because it also prepared me for a lot of other really difficult obstacles that I would have to overcome between then and now and there are plenty of stories like that and those are also stories for another day. So basically that is how that happened. It very much so fell on my lap but I pushed really hard after that to make something happen because when it's your dream you can't give up. If you want to talk more about studio ownership or just business ownership in general I would love to do that and plan to do that in the future so please hit that subscribe button because that's what we're going to be talking about here is work and life in general and all the fun stuff that comes along with that. So thank you guys so much for listening up until this point. I wanna ask you guys what your goals are, what your dreams are, your aspirations. Do any of you wanna own your own studio someday? Do you wanna go the route and become a professional dancer? Do you live in a small town? Do you wanna to head to a big city? Do you live in a big city but would rather be in a small town? What's going on with you guys? I wanna hear from you, so please comment down below. It was really nice chatting with you guys. I will see you all on Instagram and in later videos. Thank you.